I got the chance to check out Skyrim 2. It's been remastered in a board game and it's made by Modifius in collaboration with Bethesda. Now I'm a huge fan of the tabletop Modifius have already created. I've painted a lot of their miniatures. However, this new board game really does play like the video game version of Skyrim, but on tabletop. You can either play it single player or with up to four other players. And I'm gonna be walking you through a demo today with the creator of the game, Chris. Now in this video, Video, I'll be showing you the first chapter of the base game. The base game has six chapters though and if you look at how long this video is you can see how long it's probably going to take you just to play through the base game. And if you really like what you see in this gameplay demo of Skyrim the board game make sure you check out the link below in the description where you can find all the details of everything that comes with this board game as well as a bunch of stretch goals. If you also decide to buy the base game or any of its expansions earlier you're going to be getting it for a lot cheaper than if you buy it later on once it comes out in stores. But before we jump into the gameplay, let me show you this trailer that summarizes the game really well. Before the Dragonborn came to Skyrim, you are surviving members of the Blades, a legendary group who long protected the Empire of Tamriel. Abandoned by the Empire, you must work together to thwart the plot which threatens the whole of Skyrim. Build a unique character in the world of the Elder Scrolls. Choose between Enor, Dunmer, Imperium, Altmer, Khajiit, or Orsama. Equip your character with a wide range of weapons, spells, and armor. Travel across the holes of Skyrim to places like Riften, Solitude, Falkreath, and Whiterun. Attempt the huge range of evolving quests that change the game with each decision. Explore the wilderness. Gain side quests from mysterious characters. Explore ancient ruins and tombs. Battle Draugr, Frostbite Spiders, and Daedra. As you delve deeper, your foes become increasingly deadly. Gain experience and amazing treasures. Upgrade and enchant your gear. Level up your character with a wide range of unique skills and abilities. Play through six chapters of two huge campaigns in this endlessly replayable adventure game. The Elder Scrolls, Skyrim, the adventure game. Tell us, tell us what the game's about. Yeah, for sure. So this is the Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, the adventure game. Skyrim it 2. Yeah, <laughs> it's, and it's actually a bit of a prequel, so we're going to discover some cool uh, stories about the Blades, or the end of the Blades. Uh, so, it's, so in the timeline, it's based before the events of Skyrim. Yeah, that's right. It's about 25 years before this dude finds himself on a cart heading towards Helgen and gets chased by a dragon. <laughs> we're going gonna, we're gonna to see that whole uh, the story of the, the, kind of the final uh, days of the Blades play out. Um, but then we're also going to play the, the game will take you forward into the time of the fourth era as well but it's a really fun prequel story that's fantastic so you also play through the events of Skyrim but we're not there yet we haven't experienced it yet and the world's going to change throughout that experience yeah yeah but everything we do now is going to affect uh, how the game plays out it's, it's it's a board game that's played out over six let's call it scenarios or missions uh, and we call them chapters chapters in the in the story there's two big campaigns. The first campaign is set 25 years before the Dragonborn. The second campaign, another three chapters, is set uh, during the fourth era as the Dragonborn's running around, but we've got our own story to tell. And it's really an adventure game, um, much like the Skyrim video game. You've got your character, you're gonna be leveling them up, gaining cool skills, gaining cool loot, awesome magical treasures. And you can be moving around this map of Skyrim going to dungeons, meeting interesting characters, and following your unique story. And the story's different every time. 
there's this one kind of central plot, but we're all going to see different aspects of that. And uh, the decision, as I said, the decisions we make will affect how that plays out and what stories we particularly see. So right now we're playing chapter one of the base game. Yeah, and it's a very stripped back version here, this demo on Tabletop Simulator, which anyone is free to, if you've got the Tabletop Simulator software, which is usually, often, sometimes it's on sale, it's a good deal. Uh, but if you go and grab that software, if you've got it already, you can download this mod for free, the uh, Skyrim adventure game, and try the game for yourself. You can play solo, you can play with some mates online. And it's uh, one to four players as well, right? And you can play it on your own and the game will just adapt to you. That's right. There's actually a solo play tutorial uh, if you, that teaches you the rules, and then um, you can play on your own. Uh, and it's and it's it, we've designed it to be fun to play solo. It's not ridiculously hard. <laughs> good. <laughs> Some games are, uh, so it's good fun, and you can play through multiple times. And uh, I mean, I've I've been demoing this god like probably three or four times a day, and I don't get bored because every time the story is a bit different, or I'm a different character, so you try some different cool gear out. Um, Fantastic. So think, yeah, you'll, you'll have fun. All right, so where should we start? Well, let's um, let's talk about our characters. So, yes. I see you pick the Imperial. Why did you, are you, are you do you like favor the Imperials then? Oh, well, you know, it's, <laughs> so I'm always playing a Nord and a Stormclay, but I saw the Imperials are kind of like mixed between uh, armor and also use magic as well. She's got a proficiency here in restoration. Whenever she, if she learns that skill, she gets plus one to right. heal. She also yeah. has proficiency in blocking as well. So You'll I thought it would be an interesting combination that I'm not usually playing. Well, the best bit actually, I think about the Imperial is you, you, we always get treasure in games like this. So when you draw a treasure card, you get to draw two and pick the best one. Oh, you wow. Get really uh, refine the cool gear. I mean, it costs you a health. Um, as long as you're not down to your final wound at the end of a dungeon or a battle, uh, you're fine. But um, yeah, that's that's quite powerful because you can imagine picking two things and going, oh, I really want that sword or the spell or whatever. Yeah, that's huge. The rest of us have to put up with the, the luck of the draw. And we're playing as a team, right? So I could, yeah, yeah. I could find a treasure that benefits you and give that to you yeah. as well. Totally, yeah. Well, you might go, actually, I'm going to sell this. <laughs> <laughs> I am a dirty Imperial, so it could, it could be true. Never trust an Imperial. So I, I picked the Khajiit, um, which is, uh, this is a really fun character because he is one badass uh, ninja sneaker. So the, the Khajiit really favours sneaking. And um, if we have a look at his character, if, if I lose a health point, I can uh, gain a point of sneak, which we'll, we'll, we'll explain the rules later, but it basically lets you attack monsters before they attack you, uh, which is always something you want to do in Skyrim. And if I learn sneak, it doubles down again. I get more sneak, but I also, if I learn pickpocketing as a skill, I'm going to get lots of extra money in some of the encounters. Now. We've, we've only got some ragged robes and claws or your fists and a, and a, and a health potion to start with. So we need to get the story going. You've also so, got claws as well, and I've got oh, fists, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah. So sometimes in the game, we might be without our gear. And so we have to resort to our, you know, whatever we've got to hand. I mean, luckily, the Khajiit is pretty good with his um, with his claws. And Yeah, um, you seem to do a lot more damage with your claws than my basic yeah. fists, which is... Very much, you know, I'm saying the stamina and health and magic, which we'll get into in a moment, but yeah. it's it, it already reminds me of Skyrim. I already feel like I can jump into yeah. this. All right, well, let, let's let's see what the story is all about. When you get the game, you're going to get this really nice uh, big box with little card dividers, which has got all these numbered cards, and the numbered cards are the storyline, and we're going to gradually draw on those cards to uh, fill out the game. And that is like where we get this evolving storyline from. Mm. So it's a bit like uh, choose your own adventure books, isn't it? Like turn yeah, to page of. five or something like that. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, it's one where if you choose certain choices, some cards are going to get um, thrown away forever until you reset the whole game. So you could just play this one-off story, but if you want to, you can play a whole campaign, much like playing the video game. Yeah. And there's six whole chapters or six scenarios to play. And the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth will be different based on the choices you make now. So that's really interesting how the game evolves around you. 
Hopefully you won't fail any quests and have no, no. repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look at this card, 209. Okay. Tainted Haven, this is our first chapter. I'll, I'll, I'll read out the story for you. And then um, this is, we've got a card like this for every chapter, which sets the scene. So it's year 175 of the fourth era. The Great War rages across Tamriel. A group of young blade recruits go on their first mission, a patrol around the forests of Cyrodiil. A Thalmor ambush catches them off guard and they barely escape alive. Upon returning to their camp, they find it desolated. The Thalmor have been here. Cyrodiil is not safe for them anymore. They escape to Skyrim, far from the Thalmor's clutches. And in Skyrim, the Reachmen have conquered Markarth and tensions between them and the Nords are rising. Already right. very, very accurate to the law. I love it. <laughs> so this tells us if there's any special rules. There aren't. It's a kind of introductory chapter. But there's something quite important. We we have main quest cards each, which is our personal stories. If one of them reaches its maximum threat, which is this little black symbol, then the chapter is lost. Now, this is quite an interesting thing. That doesn't mean the game is over. It means we keep going. It means um, if we fail a quest, we stop there. This, this chapter is over and we start the next chapter, but it's going to be a lot harder. Okay, okay. So even if we fail, we can carry on with the story, Absolutely. but it doesn't make our life easy. Yeah. At no point in this game do you have to stop and put everything back in the box and start mm. again. We, uh, we we laugh about, we celebrate incompetency. Because <laughs> 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 we know like we all, there's all this that bit where you fail and you're like, oh, I don't have to go back all over again and I'm going to yeah. add such a cool character. It's fine, you just keep going and the game is going to evolve. Fantastic. Right. Now, uh, as you remember, every good game of Skyrim starts with you being a prisoner or trapped. Ah, oh, yes. So we've got four starting stories here. I tell you what, um, Danny, I'm going to shuffle if you shout out stop. Okay. Stop. Oh, you were arrested. Ah, <laughs> that sounds about right for me. And I'll just take the next <laughs> captured. You there captured. we go. So Very appropriate start to you, a Skyrim story. So I was arrested. For months, I've been rebuilding my life in Windhelm. One day, guards break into my home and arrest me for no apparent reason. I'm thrown into an empty cell and left there to rot. The guards show up drunk at night, celebrating my capture. One of them falls asleep close to my door. I can see the keys poking out of his pocket, and while he's asleep, I grab them. I escape through the Windhelm jail. My path takes me to the barracks, where one of the guards who arrested me sleeps. I search through his belongings until I find a mysterious note. Flip this card. Okay, let's flip it over. To all Windhelm guards, dangerous criminals are living in your midst. The names are behind this letter. You must find and capture them. You'll be handsomely rewarded. Morvai Carney. Carney? Carney. Carne. <laughs> On the back of this letter, I find a list of names of blades, mine included. Place your figure in Windhelm. And I have two options while I'm in Windhelm as well. So I can either get assistance um, in finding this Morve Carne, even if it's costly. Uh, I can also choose two equipment cards. Or my second option is to seek the assistance of an information broker to find her. Hmm. I think I think I'm gonna choose option two and seek the assistance of an information right. broker. Yeah. Runaway is the story. So Okay. Do you want to put your character on Windhelm? Yes, yes. Let me drag them over there. Move this uh, replace this quest card for you. So you can start like I guess randomly anywhere on the map. Yeah, you you could depending on which of those starting stories you get, there's four of them. Yes. And each of them have got two choices, so already our storylines are diverging. So you're going to be looking for your friend, your blade friend, Corellian the Hunter. At and, his house in Winterhold. And you can see down below that there's a, there's a little uh, skill test we're going to make when we get there. And there's a bit of a hint that if you have some plant components, then it's going to make your skill test easier. So you don't, you don't read below the line until you get there. Um, but also there's this symbol in the middle under Winterhold, which is a zero. What that means is if, um, 
you can do that at your level zero at the moment. If that said one, the game would is, is kind of giving you a hint that you probably want to be level one before you get Otherwise, there. I'll probably get my butt handed to me. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Now, the good thing is okay. you... I'm just looking at your board. You've got a couple of plant components already. We all start with two. And yes. then you've simplified things into plants, soul gems, and ore. These are the kind of three main components of the game, apart from experience and septums. And we use those to help with skill tests. You use them to make potions. Uh, soul gems and ore are used often also to help with skill tests, but also to enchant and upgrade your gear. But we'll talk about awesome. that. Okay, okay. All right, so... Yeah. Uh, have you put your you put your quest marker yeah. on top? Um, let's pick yeah. um, two pieces of equipment for you, because that That's was the other choice you had to make. Um, so what do you fancy? Look, there's all sorts of choices. You've got um, you've got Spark the spell. spell. You've got some novice robes that is good for magic kind of sorcery users. You've got a long bow. Uh, you've got iron sword and shield. You've got iron dagger. Um, battle axe, two handed. Heavy iron armor and the lighter hide hide armor. I think right now, given my character, I kind of want to play like a sort of defensive mage, just quite like a unique play style, and just sort of see yeah. how that pans out. So I think I'll go for the iron shield um, yeah. and the sparks as well. So I'll drag that down to my I'll character. Drag that down for you as well. Uh, yeah. So you you move the fists out the way. Okay. And then you you put the sparks and the shield in each hand, and you've still got your ragged robes, which gives you another bit of armor as well. So I've got one defense against each damage type. Yeah, it. damage types come in different colors in this game. So you've got one point of armor against yellow, uh, yellow damage, which we call light damage, and one point of armor of red armor, which is against heavy damage. Okay, cool. And you can give out. Uh, you've got your spark spell, which uh, is a destruction type spell which does a shock or burst and this does uh, um, purple uh, magic damage or, or and then another attack burst does yellow or purple fantastic so i've already got two damage types as well which is nice yeah that's a good good call right so let's do me i got captured i wake up with a terrible headache my hands and feet are bound to a chair what happened last night a man, my captor, sleeps on a straw mattress nearby. I easily break my bindings and face the sleeping guard. I dispatch him and explore the room. My captor's house is in a state of decay. Half of the roof collapsed a long time ago and chicken roamed freely around. Inside a satchel, I find a mysterious note. Ooh. You can see a theme here, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Nyeth, I hear you're good at finding people. This letter contains a list of names of people I need you to find and capture. I'll make it worth your while, Moira Karnai. On the back of the letter, I find a list of names of blades, mine included. She's getting around, right? Yeah. We, we, we both know that there's this central plot to do with Moira Karnai. Well, so I've really got a reason to team up. Him starting in Riften. There we go, so we're not too far away from each other. No, could have been on the other side of the map to me. Yeah, got lucky. that's handy. Uh, now, actually, this is interesting. Um, I've got similar choices to you. Do I want to find Moira Kane, even if it's costly, or seek the information, seek the assistance of an information broker? Now, you went uh, for uh, option two. Two, I believe, yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. So I wonder what's going to happen, because I can't pick card 166 as well. Ah. So this is an example of how the world evolves. So what that means is you pick the next number up. If I, if you've already got the card, I can okay. six seven. So I'm going to bring that down to my outer board. What's this then? The world has changed a bit because of your choice. Hmm. So it's the wrong type of thief. Contact, contacting the Thieves Guild in Riften is surprisingly simple. I arrange a meeting in an abandoned house at midnight. So <laughs> Sounds I about need, right. <laughs> I need to go to Riften, which is where I am at the moment. So I'm going to put my quest marker there. This panned out very well for you. Yeah. <laughs> and But look, the skill test is going to, if I want to have a bit more... Um, 
help. I need a bit of money, some septums to help me ride. Ah, it's a thieves' gear that makes sense. You need to bribe yeah. them. Yeah. So I maybe don't want to do it just yet. And I've got to go and pick some gear. Now, I'm the sneaky Khajiit, so I want something that's going to help me with um, sneaking. Indeed. So I've got my eye on the iron dagger here, and I think the hide armor. Both of them have sneak. As Plus two to sneak. And you get double damage from the dagger. Yeah. So Very nice. Good. Would it make sense to put your claws in your offhand? Just, so, well, just because they do a different damage type, right? Yeah, I mean, the the idea is that you're if you're just using your claws, like two-handed claws, you've got mm. quite a Oh, I see. So you're kind of like scratching like this. Yeah. So, okay. So I've got some uh, hide armor, which protects me against yellow damage. And I've got a weapon that does yellow damage. That is, we're set up now. That's kind of like the setup term. And now we're going to start a proper game turn. I'm going to bring down what we call the first player token. What this does is it tells us who picks the event card each turn. And that's going to rotate between us. Um, okay, so do you want to start the first turn? You're going to need to draw an event card. So let's go right, to the let's next Draw one, flip it over. Oh, okay. Oh, it's <laughs> a Daedric <laughs> invasion. God. <laughs> <laughs> Move one Daedra token towards the nearest stronghold. If it reaches the stronghold, degrade it and remove the token. There are no Daedra tokens on the board. Place it on a wilderness space, is this? That's right. And then yeah. also we get two threats. So ah, let's, okay. let's do that Daedra. So basically these are wandering monsters. They're going to be running around um, the big map, the holes, and they're going to go and uh, most of them go and attack the cities. So let's, I'm coming up to the, we've got various wandering monsters here, like vampires, Daedra, trolls, Thalmor, Justicars, Dunma cultists and dragons. dragons. <laughs> oh, yeah, but of course, we won't see the dragons till the second campaign because they don't okay. turn into do that until um, Alduin uh, God. starts doing stuff. So I'll grab a Daedra token. So basically, these are going to head off and try and attack the town. So we, we um, but they're also quite powerful. So we want to put them out of our way. For We're now. not ready to deal with them yet. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it's... they're right in the right uh, in the middle. Looks good because it's yeah. pretty far away from any towns, no matter but where it moves. You've also got there's two sides to the token, which has got a number on it, and not surprisingly, that's a number in the numbered deck. So when we go, uh... forward, we're going to draw a card to see which type of danger it is. Okay, so the other thing we've got to do is grab a couple of threats. This card tells us get some threats. So I'm going to grab two threat tokens from the top of the board. We've got a couple of options. Um, we can take one each. We could put one on one of the towns, um, which is <laughs> not necessarily a good idea. In the top right of the board, there's a table here that shows you all the towns and kind of what you can buy and sell there. And also, um, if you decide to put some threat on the towns, it's going to start causing them to descend into chaos. Ah, uh, unstable. Well, <laughs> you have to bribe your way in and then they're rioting, they start generating threats. So that's probably not Gee. a good idea. <laughs> so why don't we take one each? Okay, so I can put it on my runaway quest card and it's going to be um, one out of four. And if yeah. it gets to four, what happens? That's when the chapter fails and we end this chapter and we'll carry on to the next chapter. So we, okay. don't, so we don't want that to happen. Yeah. But we've um, if we get some more quests, like what we call personal quests, we'll be able to share the threat between those. And then we've got all other cool quests to do as well. We've done the event card. That's what you always do first. And now it's our turn. We can kind of discuss what do we want to do together. So yes. can we do a dungeon together before we go and do our quest? Maybe try yeah. and get some treasure. Get some, some experience. Gear. Yeah. So let's have a look at the board. We've got lots of places we could move to. We can move up to four spaces each. Okay, um, and movement takes place together at the same time. Work out together and move, and then we go and do all the various things that we could do, such as dungeons or events. So there's various places we can go. Look, there's a cave here. That's the very basic type of dungeon. Um, there are some mines. The, the next level of dungeon would be a, a tomb, where we can imagine there's probably going to be some undead. Then you've got ruins, where you might find Daedra, and then Dwemer cities, which are really tough, and that's going to be Dwemer constructs and, and other enemies. Goodness, okay. So I, I guess starting out, you want to go to one of these basic caves. So we we could go to this cave here, 
That's very central. I reckon you don't that makes sense. Too far. It's only two spaces yeah. for you. One, two, three. All right. So let's go over to the combat area. Ah. So now we've got there's uh, five decks of enemies here. These are these are kind of cut down decks. It's, it starts with ten normally, and then they, the number deck will add a lot more to them. So we've got animals, humans, undead, Daedra, and Dwemer. And there's a little card here that tells us what we're going to face in the dungeon. So caves are two animals, but if we were going to say a tomb, we'd find we'd face an undead and a human. I and see. So that's why they're progressively harder then. Yeah. And each of the decks gets harder as you do more of the cards. And later chapters... Ah, so you can't just farm out caves for experience. Yeah. You're going to get harder enemies in them. They do. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and later chapters, there'll be more encounters in each level. So it's going to get harder as we go. Now, awesome. we have to draw two animals in this case. Okay. This is like, you know when you go in a... A Skyrim dungeon. There's yeah. always like something that's the bigger challenge in that room before you move on. Uh, the boss uh, dungeon or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. So this is this is a small cave. It's just got a couple of rooms. So what's in our first room? We have got a mud crab. Combat music begins. We're looking yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. So he's snapping at your ankles. Um, <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> Here we go. So we've got. He's got red armor. Okay. Which means he's good at defending against red damage. Now, um, either of us could attack him because we do yellow, you do yellow or uh, purple damage. Which I goes do. through, it ignores his armor because yeah. he's got red if armor. We were doing, if one of us was doing red damage, we wouldn't be very good at attacking him because he defends okay. against red damage. So, sneak, um, if I go first, I will be able to sneak up and attack him. So, how does that work? Sneak, anytime you do a skill test, you always roll three dice. And then we have a look at how many extra abilities we've got. We've got sneak one on the hide armor and sneak one on the iron dagger. So that yeah. gives me a total of five dice. Three basic dice and two instances of sneak. So let's see. I think you've got one on your... Oh no, your character doesn't have one until you learn uh, the sneak. Well, actually, I have yeah. one a game turn. I could use my night vision. If I take a wound, I can gain an extra point of sneak. Ooh. I don't think I need to. Uh, okay. You're not scared of a fearsome mud crab, I see. No, no, not so much. <laughs> no. He's got sneak one as a difficulty. So you can see this circular design. We're going to need to roll one. Well, I need to roll one of those to be able to successfully sneak him. Okay. So let's grab those four dice in the dice tray. Just so uh, for those interested in what's the probability, there's three of these, these designs on each dice. And then there's two triangles and one diamond. Okay, so, so diamond's the hardest, triangle's like right. mid range. Oh, have you, oh yeah. you smashed it? So you've definitely snuck attack in there. I am so definitely cool. having a mud crab sandwich tonight. Because I've done a successful sneak attack, I do times two damage. I can pick any one of my attacks to do for free. So, wow. I mean, I only do need to do two damage to him. I can either do swing doubled or stab doubled. Um, I'm just both of those will kill him then, I guess. Yeah, both of those kill him. Uh, swing doesn't cost any stamina, so he is a dead mud crab. So because I did two yellow damage, he's got two red, and so that basically removes those two wounds. Now, if and if it was red damage, how would that armor work? If I had done red damage and done yeah. two red damage, he would have. Um, he would have absorbed that. So two red minus two is zero. But you wow. always do one point of damage minimum if you hit. Okay, I see. Yeah. So basically, you don't. Uh, the, the strategy here would be: let's say if I could only do red damage, but you could do your purple damage. I, I would attack say, first. You attack him first. You're more likely to wound him, and then I can maybe finish him off if you don't. We each get an experience point for uh, being in the same room together when we defeat the mud crab. So we have to go and grab. I will grab an experience point for us each. And Thank you. That's the first step in leveling up. We need seven each to, or for either of us to level up, and that will get us our first skill and attribute increase. So awesome. uh, we're getting there. Yeah, yeah. Right now, I've I've gone. So what I would do is turn my character card to the 
uh, to one side, so it yep. means I can't go next. So you're going to have to face the next enemy. The fearsome mud crab. Skeever. Oh, it's a skeever. Okay. Now he's got yellow armor. Ah, so that's not ideal good. for me. I wouldn't have been very good fighting him because I can yeah. only do yellow damage. You can sneak, actually. You've got right. Yeah, because I didn't choose any armor. Okay, yeah. so with heavy yeah. armor, you can't sneak. With That's light right. armor, you, you have can. Heavy armor. You get three dice. But can I sneak attack with sparks? Uh, no, that's a good okay. point. Okay, because oh. magic, yeah, ma like in the game, magic doesn't work for sneak attacks. That's right, that's right. So all you can do is a normal attack. So let's okay. treat this as a normal attack, which means the enemy always attacks first. Okay. So you need to, let's come to the dice tray and roll the red dice to see what he does to you. Okay, let's have a roll. So now there's different dice. There's a different design on each face of the dice. So that yep. you can see there's three different designs there, which means he's got a one in two chance of attacking you. He got the cross swords, which means he bit you for one red one damage. damage. Okay. Your I, I have a shield, which yeah. has... So what? how does that work with blocking? So basically... You've got one red armor because you've got a shield. So you block that one point of damage. Now, okay. you might go, well, how does block work? Now, if, if something had done, say, five red damage or three red damage to you, and you were like, oh, I really don't want to take that, instead of attacking, you could make a block attempt. Oh. And so it's basically like doing an attack, but if you're successful, you don't take any damage at all. That's amazing. Maybe you okay. found one of your last wounds and you're like, Chris, I can't, I don't want to risk dying. Can you do this? So you, I just say, look, why don't you block and I'll attack him on my turn. I see. Okay, that makes sense. So you blocked the damage, but you yep. something still happens, right? Because it's not free. If, if you block any and all damage, then it costs you stamina. So that means you have to reduce your stamina i gotta reduce one. my stamina by one i love this uh, so these trays they're all like engraved as well yeah, so like this, all is the... a, this is a die cut tray so imagine it's two levels of cardboard printed card that's stuck together so it's got this nice like relief 3d effect really nice like place things perfectly in their spot now it's your turn to attack him okay so i've i've got the spark spell yeah. um and i can use Shock or burst? I think I should go with shock because obviously he's got yellow armor. Um, yeah. Though that would be harder for me to do because it requires one triangle. Uh, yeah, so it's it's actually just slightly harder to get two circles. We'll go for a shock attack then, since that has okay. the highest chance of success. So how how do I know how many attack dice I'm rolling? So first of all, spend the magicka. Okay, so magicka? I'll minus one magicka. Yeah. Um, you always roll three dice plus any skills or abilities. Now, this has got a little, um, see this uh, blue uh, uh, chunk there that says destruction. If you learn the destruction spell, you'd be able to roll an extra dice. But you don't have that okay. yet. Yeah, so I'm so rolling three dice. Rolling three dice and you need to get the triangle shape. It's a roll, here we go. Oh. No, nothing. Now, if you want, you can push your luck a bit. So how do you do that? Um, you can roll up to two more dice currently at this level, and each time you each extra dice costs you one magicka. Now mm. there's two of those triangles on each dice, so it might be worth one push. It's a one in three chance to get that triangle. Okay, I'll use one magicka then, okay, so and then I'll one. roll one dice. Yeah. So we get the truck. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. Well done. So you did one purple damage, magic damage. So let's go to him. He's got yellow armor. He can't defend. So you just take, take that one damage. One right now it's over to me. So I have to do a normal attack. But remember, he always. So you can't attacks. sneak attack anymore because I already attacked you the target. When you enter the room, and as long as okay. you didn't act in the last room. Now, if you're playing solo. That's, there's a different rule because you can sneak first in every room. So that gives you a little bonus if you're playing on your own. Right, I'm rolling the dice. Yeah. Oh, we like, missed you then. It. So I've got, uh, I'm in. It's easier to get the stab attack, attack. It does more damage, but I'll still only do one yellow because he's got yellow armor. Yeah. I'm going to spend the stamina and I need a triangle too. Oh, is that right. cops? It's not. Yeah. I mean, I guess it would 
sort of oh, Vinny circle. Let's roll that one again. Okay. Hey! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, so in, what that says is I do two yellow damage, but okay. remember, he's got yellow armor. Two yellow minus two yellow is zero, but we always do one point of damage. So back to you. Okay. He's got to attack you first. Yes, so let me roll his red attack dice. See what he gets. He's oh. hit me again, yeah. for, bit me for one red damage. Yeah. So I can yeah. lose a stamina and block that with my shield. Yeah, that's so right. So I'll do that. Yeah. Um, and Good. then I get to attack back. And I think I'll go for another shock spell since I only yeah. need one more damage to kill him. That's so right. I'll lose one more magicka and I'll roll my free dice to attack him. All right, here we go. Yes, perfect. Okay, so he takes that one damage then, the magic damage. Right. Perfect. So, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, so we got ski red for dinner. <laughs> 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 okay, and we also get another experience point each. Okay. So there's lots of ways of getting more XP. You um, finished the dungeon now as well. Now, just out of interest, if we were level okay. one, we would now discard these. These are two, le these are level zero monsters. So, that's how the dungeons scale. So you're going to discard any monsters that are less than your level. But uh, already, um, the way we, we reset the uh, dungeon deck is you shuffle the top card with those two monsters and put those three cards back on the top. So something more dangerous in the animal cards is now mixed in with them. So it's ooh. slightly scaling. I see. So you continuously sort of get lower and lower on that deck until you get like the raid boss monsters at the bottom. Uh, yeah, exactly. And we're unlocking some cool cards at the moment. Uh, these called legendary encounters, which are really, really, really hard, um, tough, uh, like boss level star monsters that you're going to have to team up with to fight. And they're only in the game found edition of the base game. And if you okay. defeat, you get some really famous uh, cool um, Skyrim artifacts that are super powerful. Right, the other bonus for completing a dungeon is we get treasure. That's, this is one of the best bits. <laughs> okay. And so, I get two treasure cards and I get to pick one yeah. as well, right? Now remember, it costs you a wound. Um, okay, I, I think I've got enough. Yeah, I've got full health, so I'm going to reduce one health to do that uh, ability. And at the end of uh, every turn, we reset all our health, stamina, and magicka anyway. If you were on your last wound, you wouldn't be able to do this because it would... I'd kill myself to get <laughs> two treasure. Yeah. It's okay, I'll take the treasure. You don't need it. So, right, I'm going to draw a B treasure. These are basic treasures, and then there's advanced okay. treasures. We also have dragon treasures, which are even Ooh. more awesome. Draw okay. a... Draw two yeah. of these. Oh, yes, draw two. Ooh. Okay. Oh, wow. So I got, oh, there's an amulet that gives me a skill before I even level up, the speech skill. Or yeah. I have heavy armor, which stops four damage. The dwarven armor. They're both so good, though. <laughs> oh, my God. See, they're both, um, they're both worth five septims. So you, you can sell it if you want. Okay. Ah, damn. I, I'd suggest maybe you want to take the armor because that's going to give you some really good armor. That is very good armor, isn't it? Okay, I'll, I'll take really the armor. Good sorcerer. <laughs> that was a difficult decision. Okay, so I'll put this, uh, uh, that. place it to my rags. That back in with the, yeah, look at that. You're there we go. Nails now. I'm pretty heavily armored now with a shield and dwarven armor. Yeah, and it, it means you definitely can't sneak. Uh, I mean, you couldn't sneak with yeah, this spell. But I think that's a good choice because it means you can take a lot of damage now. Perfect. So let's reset our um, our abilities, the uh, stamina, magicka, and health at that's, the end of the yep. turn. And that's that's the end of that turn, the dungeon. So awesome. the first player marker moves to me. I just turn my character card back. So I now draw the event card. Let's see what are we going to get. Ooh, a world Ooh. quest. The Skyforge lies dormant. Still you can forge some weapons with it. Okay, so this is a, a, a kind of what we call a world quest and it's in white run. So we're gonna put a gray marker there. Now this, uh, I'm just gonna move this um, yeah. over to the world quests here. If you go to white run and you do, you use the forge, you're gonna be rolling three dice. If you have smithing as a skill, you roll a fourth dice. You need three circles and if you have some ore, you'd be able to roll extra dice. 
Why uh, would you want to do that? Well, if we succeed, we can draw one advanced treasure. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And we can draw card 150 and shuffle it with the top four cards of the event deck. What does that mean? Well, that's probably a pretty good card to help us. Shuffle it in with the top four cards. We're less likely to get a bad card. And the downside, if we fail, is we degrade White Run, which means White Ooh. Run, you won't be able to buy or sell there anymore. We don't want to fail then. <laughs> no, and we need to take more threats. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> so I'm gonna, should we just take one of these each? Yeah. So I'm two hours of four now. I think maybe we both want to do um, our main quest. Yeah, head out that way. Yeah. I want to get some money before I go back to Rifton. Could I'm head good to head up to the north then. Yeah, so why don't you go to Winterhold maybe and do your do that. quest. So one, two, three, four. I can already get to Winterhold. Perfect. Yeah, and I'm going to go to this wilderness space because I'm going to try and do... Um, well, I'm going to get a... I get a personal quest and maybe maybe find some money so, so you just uh, get a random quest when you land on the wilderness yeah, tower let's see how that works now because i'm first player i do this first so let's go okay. up to the uh we've got town um town encounters and wilderness encounters so i'm gonna shuffle the wilderness deck and draw a card these are you know where you can all sorts of interesting things can happen who have we got zibam caravan trader i've traveled all across this land seen many things care to share some stories and mead <laughs> i immediately gain a component and take some soul gems campfire stories challenge oh, i see some experience points i can roll some extra dice drum roll here we go oh, oh. you have two yeah. experience to push with it's a dilemma, shall yeah. I? I'm going to risk one. It's quite... That's a lot, but it's... So look one at in the three chance of you getting it, right? If, I, if I'm successful, I gain three experience. Of three. It's huge. Yeah, it's worth it. And it's a one It's it's a one in two. It's 50-50 chance, right? Here we go. Okay, where's that dramatic Skyrim music when you need it? Okay. Whoa. Oh, yes. hey! <laughs> free experience. Fantastic. Paid off. Paid off. So I'm going to... Good gambling uh, investment there. <laughs> so I've got now four experience and That's I get three components. So I'm going to take three soul gems. Now we've got a couple of choices. I can go, thanks, Zibam. See you again another time. And he can go back into the discard pile and maybe someone else will find him. Or okay. I can listen to his story and take his quest. So we're going to get rid of Zibam forever. It means we're never going to see him again for the entire campaign. Because otherwise, we might see him again in a later game. Oh, okay, so, so I could draw you know, that card later on or something. Yeah, so I'm going to take card seven, which is going to be a new personal quest. Okay. This is a this is called a personal quest. It's um, not as important as the main quest, which are black. Um, if anyone's got colorblind difficulties, we actually have this black dot next to I them. love that you're a Khajiit and you've, you've drawn Moon Sugar Rising. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So this is an interesting thing. It's like, again, I need money for this to do this. Interesting thing is I can now absorb an extra three threat. Ah, oh, so you can threat. spread your threat tokens throughout yeah. the quest that you have. Time, uh, and I don't have to risk failing the main quest. So now it's your turn. Fantastic. Um, so I am in um, Winterhold, and yeah. I, I want to do my, my main quest, Runaway. Yeah. Do you want to read it and see what happens? So I decide to look for my blade friend, Kerelian, the hunter, at his house in Winterhold. The place is empty. A neighbor tells me he left in a rush a few weeks back. Inside, I realize he barely had time to gather his belongings. I look around for clues. So my objective now is to open a strange looking chest. Hmm. <laughs> Lock picking. Yeah, I don't have a lopping skill, so I'm just going to roll three dice and get yeah. the triangle. That's right. And you've got you've got a couple of plants, so you've got a chance yeah. to roll extra yeah, dice. Push time. Okay, okay. Let's get these three dice here. And cross our fingers for the triangle. Hey, there we go. Successfully. 
for the first it. time because in the video game I fail lock picking all the time. <laughs> I know, I'm terrible I'm at lock picking. <laughs> I, I spent, I, I just, I pumped up my lock picking skill as much as I can, and I've got all the little <laughs> potions that give you extra lock. Increase picking. the window of opportunity as much yeah, as possible. I was in a, um, yeah, I was in a Dwemer city, and there was this one really cool chest. Oh, I, number of times I tried to lock pick that chest and just failed. So. Oh my goodness. I, I know the feeling, especially when you're out of lockpicks at the bottom of a dungeon with a boss chest. Yeah. Right, so I've done this successfully. So I flip this card? Yeah. Um, yeah. So cool. success. I open the trapped chest without any problem. I gain five septums and two experience. Yeah, I'll bring those for you. Uh, interestingly, what happens if I failed this? I open the chest, but a trap destroys its contents. And there's like a gravestone with an X. Yeah. So if you had failed, somewhere in Skyrim, one of the blades would have died. What does that actually mean in a game like this? So let's have a quick oh, look God. at the top of the board. There's a deck here for the blades. Now, these are really cool cards. Like, I mean, really cool cards. Really helpful to us. Really amazing followers we can gain. Really cool events. Followers? Wow. Yeah, you can get some followers. Like, you can get Mjol when she was an adventurer. Oh my god, before she yeah. just started hanging around in Riften. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. You get, uh, there's lots of characters in here. That lots of Easter eggs. <laughs> encounter when they used to be an adventurer. Yeah. But, so, if we had failed that quest, what, we would shuffle this deck and one of these cards at random is a blade who would die. Oh my and god, okay. can appear all the way through the next six chapters and when we most need them but if you had failed one of them would be dead forever and get thrown away so we just completely lose our ability to interact with yeah. that here we go look let's have a look at merton the bloody member of the blades it's you you saved my life you know that you know that let me repay the favor you would then gain oh follow. you get a follower card damn okay so these are huge yeah, yeah really really cool cards so you definitely yeah, rather than fail. <laughs> I mean, it's unavoidable sometimes, but that's part of yeah. the story. So okay, so um, in an in a hidden compartment in the chest I unlocked behind the bed, I find a note signed by Carolian, the hunter, addressed to any blade who finds it. Someone was on this trail and he escaped. The note also mentions Morvea's recent activities. He points at Morvea Karnaya and her hideout in an abandoned cave in Hafinger. Ah, so I guess I'm going to Hafinger. I've got two options. I will storm the hideout myself, or I can hire some mercenaries. I think we're going to storm the hideout. <laughs> You've got for it now, haven't you? Yeah, so that, I've got a taste for blood. <laughs> I mean, interesting, just to point out, now, you notice, even if you'd failed, you still continue the story and get to make the option. So again, yeah. the game never goes, that's it, you suck, put the game away, come back when you, you feel you can do it. You just keep going with the story. Um, of that. course, the game's getting a bit harder because yeah. one of the blades just died. Uh, okay, we're going to get you card 173 from the numbered deck. What's I love that? how your actions have implications to them. You've succeeded this quest, so it goes down here. You've got your little story that's building up. You've now got a new main quest, and this threat goes away. Okay. Because you completed that. So I've got to put my quest marker on Hafinger. That's the end of our turn. Oh, and the, uh, one last thing. Have a look at that. It's There's a one there under Hafinger, which means... Oh, really so I need to level up a little bit. Look, you're going to have to face two humans together. Ooh, okay, maybe, okay. Maybe uh, I can come and help you with that. Oh, that would be good. I don't think I could do that on my own. Uh, it's the next turn, and the yeah. first marker moves back to you. So you I, I need to draw an event card, okay. Conspiracy. Ooh, there are forces working against you. Place a, a, a token on each quest, and then discard this card. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we need another threat token. So, um, because I the old card's gone, I've like renewed my available yes. threat token counters. Yeah, that's so good. good. Now, bad news is we have a world quest, so that's got to take a threat because we have to put one on every. Oh no! And that's only got the Skyford world quest only yeah. has another okay. one token remaining on it. To take two. Oops! Oh gosh, I'm I'm now at three. I definitely have to go and do my your main quest. Yeah. 
Yeah. So this yeah. is interesting because now these counters are really starting to push you in a direction like yeah. a time. I mean, almost. I could take one of those and put it on a town. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if I get a fourth, uh, I would probably definitely do that. But it's fine. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to get Riften and, and uh, try and do that quest. Okay. So what do you what do you want to do? Um, um, I'm going to go to Riften. Um, I well, so there's there's this world quest as well that's also mm. needs to be done. So I, I kind of want to get some ore on my way to White Run um, for this world quest than the Skyforge. You can't get there in one movement. I mean, well, actually, you can move further by using carts. That's really simple. You just pay one septim for every hold that you're crossing, not including the one you're in. So if you wanted to use a cart to get to White Run, it would cost you one two gold. I think what I'd like to do is go to like. Yeah. Try and get a wilderness event on the way, and then so if I go one, two, three, four, and then hopefully I'll get a resource, um, some ore that I need for this side quest. Okay, so I'm going to move one, two to Riften, and uh, because it's your, you're the first player, we do you first. So awesome. let's go and do. If you want to draw a wilderness card here. Okay, so I'll flip that over. Favina Belnos. Empire Forger. Ooh. She holds up a wanted poster. If you see this fugitive, let the East Empire Trading Company know. So I gain one resource, and then we have uh, a mini game to find the fugitive. So yeah. I think I'll go for the ore on the resource, I'll even though to push at this challenge, I'd need soul gems. Yeah. I need three dice, and I need to get two circles. And I cannot push because I don't have any soul gems. Yeah. Here we go. Love Two it. circles. Let's give it a roll. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Nothing I can do about that. I failed. Yeah. So does she go back into the deck now? No. No. Well, you've got the choice. You can now take the side quest, the person. Oh, so quest. even though I failed her challenge, I can yeah, still yeah. take her side quest. Get that. Those couple of rewards, but you can still I think get I'm going to take the side quest. Yeah. Solitude. That's in solitude. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's actually really close to having it. Now, <laughs> this is a tough one. See the objective. Go to once you get to solitude, you then have an objective to go to winter. Ooh, yeah, add a threat to this quest because you've got the threat tokens that it's adding to itself, and then the threat tokens that you get from like events and other things going on. So, so once you go to solitude, you're on a timer to do that. Um, okay, you know, okay, across the board. I'll bear that in mind before I. <laughs> um, if you... I mean, you have horses as well, right? Uh, yes. Now you can buy you can buy a horse with ten septims, um, and you can get for me. some quests. You can steal a horse, um, oh, which has consequences as well. I bet, I, just like in the game. I love I love that you have all these sort of role play aspects, just like the video game. That you really yeah, thought about how to make it like the game. It's basically a light role playing game as a board mm -hmm. game. You know. Right. Okay. So you have done your town quest. So over to me. I am going to go and do. The wrong type of thief. Contacting the Thieves Guild in Riften is surprisingly simple. I arrange a meeting in an abandoned house at midnight. As soon as I arrive, I feel the tip of a dagger pressing against my back. Hand over all the money and don't try anything funny. That's what I get for trusting thieves. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got to beg her to stop stealing from me. Right, three oh. dice. Two, I need two uh, of the circles. So over to the dice. And I've got no money to try and bribe no it's all or nothing oh no. that's cocked. Well, it's cocked but even if i did get a circle i'm oh uh, we still would have failed yeah uh, what, happens, what happens when you fail okay as a failure my pleading <laughs> you're so poor cold. i lose all my money oh i mean i didn't have any money anyway so it's <laughs> yeah you're so poor that they literally just couldn't take anything from you <laughs> no. now look if i'd succeeded i would have gained two um XP. But anyway, whilst Halaya counts, well, the gold I don't have, I ask her about Moiva Kanoi. Turns out she is all too happy to help me crush her. Moiva used to run with the Blackbird Marauders, a group of small-time pirates working around Skyrim. They are currently docked in Windhelm. So, so I concoct a potion of invisibility to infiltrate the ship, or will I convince the guards of Windhelm to raid the vessel? What would a Khajiit do? Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm definitely not going to do the hard work, right? I think, no. I think I'm going to convince some guards. Well, I wonder if that's going to involve some money. 
You know what? I think I might go with the potion because I've got a feeling that some well. guards is probably going to involve bribing them, and I don't have any money. And concocting a potion, I've got. I'm and just I've got. A, I mean, I, I've done. I haven't done this one before, so <laughs> I'm guessing. But I'm going to go for one seven two. So what is this? I'm going to have to go to Windhelm and brew an invisibility. But look, thankfully, I've got some plant components, so I've got a chance of doing this. But look. You, you really want to be level two to do this. <laughs> Whoa, that's really yeah. hard. That's a big step up. It is, I know. So I need to do a bit of leveling up before I get there. You've got like all the quests in Windhelm. I'm actually in a town. Um, I, I, so I could do some upgrading. I think I'm going to try and enchant my Iron Dagger. It costs two soul gems. So I spend a soul gem. So that uh, gets me down to two. And I go to the enchanting deck. And the shuffle it. Here we go. Could be good. What I get? Oh, gain one maximum magicka. Mm, not ideal. Not ideal. So I've got an option here. I can spend yeah. another soul gem, which is what I'm going to do, to draw another card. Because uh, I'm saying to the enchanter, like, mm, what else you got? <laughs> Run that again. <laughs> uh, you know, he's like, okay, well, that's going to cost you. So I can draw another one and pick. Oops. Oops. Pick the best one. Oh, wow. Oh, that's nice. Heal one out. wound after every encounter. So what that means is, do you remember I said that in a dungeon, um, you don't heal up wounds in between each room? Yeah. This lets me heal a, wo a wound after each room. That's really good. Especially because you can lose one health to, to get plus one to sneak on yeah. your Khajiit as well. So it works really well for you. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay. That was definitely worth the extra the extra soul gem to draw another card. Definitely. Uh, okay, I've I mean I've got no money. I've got nothing else I can do. So that's the end of the turn, and it's the next turn. So the the first player token moves to me, and I'm going to draw a card, an event card. Oh, it's another world quest. So let's move it over mm -hmm. there. Preparing for the storm. The Thieves Guild in Riften is hoarding items in case they are needed. Well, we're going to have to take two threats, so let's grab that first. Split this again. Yep, let's do that. I'm going to put it on my side quest this time. Yeah. So what this means is, in Riften, we need to get three diamonds. That's really hard. <laughs> hmm. So, um, and with three diamonds. But you can get, automatically gain diamonds if you hand in treasures. That could be a starting item or any any normal treasures oh really oh that's good the okay bonus, we get two xp and eight gold and we get this card 144 tricky I mean, but a nice reward i haven't got any spare gear that i would be happy to give away no i mean <laughs> maybe later we'll, we'll be able yeah, to maybe get later them. we're gonna have to just take the risk that the these guild will be okay mm. <laughs> Right, so um, what do you want to do on your turn? You're going to go to White Run. Uh, yes, yes, I'm going to head board. over to White Run. Um, yeah, so one, two, three, four. Mm, I'm going to go to Windhelm and do a town event and see if that might get me some money. Fingers Not. crossed. Yeah. So you've got a town event deck up here. Orcus Chief, yes, yes, Gullapok. I'm looking for brave, strong fighters. My people need you. Show me your strength, and you'll be rewarded. Okay, I can gain uh, a component. Well, I can push with ore for this one, so I'm gonna can grab ask for ore just in case. Now, if I had a heavy armor, which I don't, uh, as a skill, that would help. But I've got three dice. I need two circles. Doable, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here we go. So. I gain two XP and two components. And I'm going to take his quest as well. So discard okay. this card to take 22. A home in need. I'm going to need money for that. Got all my all these quests. <laughs> <laughs> money in <and> speech. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Okay. So that is... Um... Oh, I'm in a town. Now, I've yeah, also you can got... upgrade oh, something, right? So I can upgrade as well. I'm going to... Yeah, go on, I might as well upgrade this dagger, I think. It's going to be the so. best iron dagger you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. So, paying to all. Same thing, I can pay another uh, to draw another card if I don't like the first one. 
What's this do? Ooh. It's, look, that's now doing two damage with that attack. So yes, I'm going to have a go at the, the world quest. The right, Sky Forge thinking. lies dormant. You can forge some weapons with it. So yeah. I don't have the smithing skill, so I'm running three dice. Uh, I need to get three of the uh, circle ones, so it's quite a difficult one. It is, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll have a go. There's a big payoff if you do it. We'll see. I'll definitely... I've got auto push. Oh, oh, okay. So we can push the last one with my one yeah. or all riding on that and <laughs> we'll see what we get no nope. uh, <laughs> <laughs> denied so we denied. fail this discard this card which means it goes away forever okay and we degrade white run we've put a threat on white run now that means we can't buy or sell in white run we don't actually have the market deck in this there's three market decks that are on a path of might so heavy armor and big mm. weapons Path of Shadows, so bows and sneaking daggers and life armors, and Path of Sorcery, which is things like potions and spells. Um, so that would mean we can't buy or sell. We also can't buy or sell. Well, you can't buy components now that either. Oh, okay. So, so uh, as well, like some of these world quests have multiple like parts to them as well. So I guess because I failed the first part, yeah, we would lose out on the whole storyline to do with the Skyforge. So that's Oh wow. So we miss out on that throughout the whole campaign if we continue yeah. onwards. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Oh well, no worries. We'll keep going. <laughs> it's we'll fine. It's distraction anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of the turn and the first player marker goes back to you. Yep. And you need to draw an event card. Let's do it. Contract on cultists. The black sacrament has been performed. A group of cultists must die. The Brotherhood demands it. And this is in Falkreef, and we need to clear one human and one Daedra enemy. Well, so I, it's probably doable for us, I reckon, if we can yeah, level up actually. once. Why don't we do another dungeon together? There's a cave okay. here in, mid in the middle. Let's do so that. maybe we can gain some money. I wonder what we're going to get. Another mud crab. Good. <laughs> I forgot that we need. To... Oh no, that um, contract on cultist didn't give us any threats. So okay, good. Of... So that's okay. Bit of breathing room. Yeah. Okay, so it's a mud crab again. So now I've still got sneak one on the hide armor, sneak one on the iron dagger. So I've got a total of five. But actually, just out of interest, there is a harder difficulty rule where you can ignore the base three dice you've got and you only get dice for any of the Sneak bonuses on the weapons and say like my the ability i get with khajiit um, okay so, so it kind of like makes it sneaking much more challenging it does yeah so i am rolling five dice smash it hopefully <laughs> hey <laughs> there we go i've had times where you don't roll a single one that you need so uh, <laughs> four yellow because it's my minimum is two awesome so it takes out his damage we both get an xp Fantastic. I think, have you leveled up? You must be close. Yeah, you. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> Level up noise. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, it's not from Skyrim, but um, uh, yeah, so I've got the max. I can't get any more in this dungeon because you, once you level up, and I don't level up until the end of the turn. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Ah! Oh, bear. it's a bear. Okay. <laughs> I went so this is, yeah, this I is an. Yeah. This is an experience of the higher graded enemies, right? That we, we shuffled in. Level zero, but he is tougher. Oh, okay. And he looks scary. Boards. Look, you're going to get a B treasure if you kill him. So oh, damn. So we have you have loot from the enemies you kill within the dungeon as well as at the end of the dungeon. And the more powerful enemies will give you A treasures, advanced treasures, and sometimes dragon treasures, which are amazing, amazing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so you can't attack me first. So you want to roll the... Um... Uh, roll his attack dice. Here we go. So, axe. what's that? An axe. Front. Two yeah. red damage. That's a good thing you got that dwarven armor. Because you can yeah. protect up to five red. So, Damn. again, you don't take any damage, but you do take a point of One firm. stamina. Yeah. Okay. So, now, now I get to attack back with my spark spell. Um, so, he has two yellow armor. So I should probably just go for a shock attack. Well, you can do burst because that will do two um, 
purple. We oh okay oh it's, it's two uh, yeah I'll do burst damage then. Yeah, that um, costs two magicka. Okay, so I'll minus two magicka. Yeah, uh, and, and then um, so three dice I need. There we go. Fingers crossed. Hey, so that was very successful. So I'm now doing two magic damage to him. Yeah, two purple damage because he's got yellow armor. It goes straight through. So it does two damage. He's got Perfect. two left. So it's back to me. I can't sneak him because you can only do that at the beginning of the room if you haven't acted before. So I'm just doing a normal attack. So I'm going to do um, my stab attack. Oh, wait. I've got to, he's got to attack first, remember? So what does he get? Oh, it's cops. So I better roll that again. An axe. Crunch. Oh, crushes me for two red damage. I've only got two yellow armor, so I can't defend. I take two wounds. Damn. Now I can attack back. So I'm going to do spend stamina to do my stab. Got it. Oh, nice. So I do two yellow damage, but downside of that is he's got two yellow armor. So that, that absorbs it, but he takes a point of damage. Don't you have the plus one, though, from the upgrade you did? That, that is on the top attack, the swing attack. Oh, I see. Now, I mean, the good thing about that is if I'm out of stamina, I can do, still do the swing attack and it, it could do two damage, but I need a, a diamond. If I'm out of stamina, I can either burn health to use stamina or use that attack for free. So now so he's going to attack me again. Roll, see what he does. Oh, I rolled everything. Uh, oh, so is that nothing? So he missed his attack. Correct. Yeah. So now you've got your chance. He's on his last wound. So okay. Okay. So so I should go for shock, I guess, because uh, that yeah, has a slightly higher easy. chance. Yeah. So I'll go roll these three dice. Uh, I'm looking for triangles. There we go. Hey. Okay. So we killed him. Yeah. So we each get an XP. Well, I don't get an XP. You do because I've already maxed out. So okay. And I also got a uh, a basic treasure from and, the bear and then i get the other reward which is a plant component now okay remember your imperial luck that damned luck <laughs> so, um you get to take a wound which heals up at the end of this turn so yeah, you can so I'll do that get two and draw uh draw one and remember at the end of the dungeon you get to pick a treasure. So do the first one for the bear. Okay, so I'll draw two, uh, flip them over. Ooh, oh, okay. So leather armor or amulet of articulation, which gives me the speech. I think I'm gonna go for the speech one. Um, yeah. That looks like it's gonna be more useful to me. And Imperials yeah. being very political uh, feels appropriate. Does uh, that go in my my clothing? Or no, it goes in my yeah, amulet. So. You can you can have up to two wearables, so that's okay. one wear. And it, you notice you can enchant it as well. You could ah. um, enchant it with three soul gems to give it more ability. So now it's the end of the dungeon treasure. So you can okay. draw two. You could take another wound, which you I'll still take can. another wound. wound. So it's it's one of those things where, like, obviously, if I had a situation where I'd taken damage in battle, I wouldn't be able to use this ability. If it would kill you by taking the extra wound, you can't. Yeah. Okay, so I'll flip these over. Again, iron war axe and fire bolt. Okay, yeah. hmm. that spell's pretty good. That is that's better than my shock spell, isn't it? It is the spark spell. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll replace sparks Ooh. for fire bolt. Okay. So yeah, that does two okay. magic damage uh, with the potential to do three on torch. Yeah, and it's, nice. uh, you notice it's the same difficulty but better damage. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Nice. Let's show how leveling up works. This is pretty cool. Okay. So first of all, um, I can get my first skill, which costs me the 7 XP. What do I want? Now, I could get extra sneak skill, but I don't think I need that yet. I kind of feel like I want to roll more dice to guarantee that I can get these one-handed attacks in with the dagger. So Definitely. I'm going to get the one-handed skill if you have a look there's loads of skills here i could get um block heavy armor smithing sneak lock picking pickpocketing speech alchemy and lots of different spell tools so but i'm going for the one-handed 
And that gives you plus one dice to one hand weapons. Yeah, that's right. So now I'm rolling four dice when I do my combat checks. Fantastic. And the next skill, the next level up is going to cost eight, then nine. And once I fill up all of these, I can start becoming legendary. And then legendary would cost 15, and I would be able to, for example, turn this one over to the. Ah, legendary. then you get two dice. I see. You can imagine we're going to be fighting really tough enemies and have weapons that cost uh, are really hard to get the results to get really big damage. Mm. Now, the other thing, oh yeah, we have to reset our, um, our stamina and magicka at the end of the turn. Now, I'm going to increase one. Uh, I think I'm going to increase wounds, my health. Yes. Oh. I've got the ability to take a wound uh, to sneak, and with my ability to heal wounds, that would really keep me alive, and I can really ramp up my sneaking. Awesome. So that is the end of the turn. We did the dungeon, so it's the next turn, and we move the pl first player token, and I draw an event card. A mystery bargain. Go to any stronghold and turn in 10 gold septims, draw a treasure. Ooh. Now that's what we call a active event. So it goes here. Okay. Active events are basically always on until they are replaced by another active event, which could happen at any time. So if anyone saves up a bit of money, you can go and get a a treasure, which could be pretty good. Right. Okay, so we need to take these threat tokens, so we'll share them out again. Yeah. Okay. I should probably work my way to Hafinger. There's two... Yeah normal uh human characters i've got to kill there yeah, um right. i might i kind of want to get one experience along the way so i'm just thinking like how how the best way is to do that you could do a um uh, uh a wilderness or a town encounter there's a wilderness mark here on the way or i could get to this town Morthal. go to Morthal and do a town encounter there and then you're one move away from your all right, that will go off in the other direction then. One. All right, and two, I'm going to go to Windhelm. Four. I'm just going to risk doing my next quest because um, I think I need to get on with it, and I can push with advance, so it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right. So so, it's interesting how we now have to kind of split up across the other side of the map, and we can't help each other out on our yeah. our adventures. Right. So as first player, I'll do my. Uh, quest time on my card. I'm doing the invisible plan. Okay. Before facing the black blood marauders, I'll need to make sure my endeavor is a safe one. I decide to concoct an invisibility potion using the alchemy station at the white file. The invisibility potion recipe is not an easy one, but I trust my alchemical skills. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, if I thought about it when I leveled up, I could have got alchemy. As a I don't think it would have been worth it in the long run. I need to roll three dice, and I need a try a, a diamond, which is the I hardest one to get, get, right? Yeah. Oh, Ooh, are you gonna push? It takes plants. I'm gonna, push. I'm gonna push once. Okay. I mean, it's a one in six. It's probably worth it. You never know. Oh, yes, God, he's done it! <laughs> Fantastic. I was a level two I as well. Do laugh about my dice rolling luck sometimes. Uh, right, so we when succeed. They don't even notice me. Gain ten zap and two. Oh, you're rich. Place one marker next to solitude. Wow. Okay, so place one grey marker next to solitude. Player gain ten septims. You also now have 10 septums to do the mystery bargain quest where you can get an advanced treasure. See what I get. Want to see the advanced treasures. Here we go. Shuffle it. Dun, 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 dun. Here we are. Where is it? Oh, Elven. it's perfect for you. That's perfect. Yeah, Elven Armor. Bring it that down. gives you plus one sneak and resistance to both one red and three light damage, which is really nice. Right. You know what? I'm going to sell the hide armor at the same time, which gives me two gold. Smart. With just this heavily oh. upgraded and enchanted iron dagger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, good. That is... Um... Oh, yeah, so we just got to finish this bit of story. 
I find Moira Kanai's bunk bed. Under the mattress, there's a sealed envelope. The letter inside gives me some revealing information. Draw card 180. Uh, just out of interest, if we'd failed, I would have lost a treasure. <laughs> wow. It's an and a blade would have died. That's a... Sh they're getting increasing stakes, aren't we, with these uh, main quest cards. You really don't want to fail them. Type 180. Ah. It actually gives me 182. The reason is because when there's only two players, we discard 180 and 181. Oh, okay. Kind of customizes the story for the number of players. So, put that in. What is this? The say? High Elves. A group of High Elves have been seen meeting Moiva on several occasions. They have exchanged documents and settings. Damned Elves. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Right, okay. So don't flip this card until instructed by the player who draws 183. All right. Okay. So that's me done, and you went I to... think I was planning to do a town quest to get one experience. Yeah, so let's in go... In Morthal here. So I'll draw okay. one from the town cards. Flip it over. Wreath. Just wreath. Wreath trains horses. They're better than people. Can you shoe a horse? I'm brief. <laughs> Gain one. Hmm, what ingredient do I need? Okay, I need st ore to push, so I'm going to take one ore. Um, and then we need two triangles from three dice. I don't have the smithing skills. We don't get a bonus. Yeah. So let's try and roll. Three dice to get two triangles. Here we go. Oh, we did it. We did it. Perfect. Okay. And so. Uh, Get you your ore because you didn't use it. And I also gain another two of something. I think yeah. I might go for maybe another two ore actually. Yeah, because then you could do upgrade. some upgrade. You could upgrade your dwarfen armor. Um and let's have a look. I also get two experience, so I can level up because it only goes up to the the cap of seven. What skill do you want to get? Do you want to get if you get destruction? I think that would be that would make a lot of sense because then I get an extra dice for rolling the damage. Um, and then I think I don't know if I should increase because my my if I have more stamina I get more tanky, but I can cast more spells with magic. Yeah, and it also look at the torch attack you want. Uh, you're gonna, it's gonna cost you Take, magic. takes a lot of mana. So I reckon I'm actually gonna increase my magicka, which is something I never do in Elder Scrolls games. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Always play a stealth arch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Uh, great. Um, and then do you want to upgrade your. Try upgrading your dwarven armor? Yeah. So um, I'll get oh, rid of gonna... my free ore to upgrade that. Let's go ahead and swap one over. I get so, oh so it gives me another one defense so I get oh, five no, defense. You're protecting against five reds. You are a serious tank. Yeah. <laughs> they're not going to mess with me unless they're doing light attacks. Yeah, brilliant, awesome. Okay, and is there a quest attached to this as well? Uh, yeah, so there's. I might as well take the quest. Yeah, my little stallion. <laughs> <laughs> Reth is restless. The Jarl stole my horse, Little Nightwind. Runs like a snow fox. He's in the Jarl stables. Please retrieve him for me in Whiterun. Bloody Jarl Bolgriff taking people's <laughs> horses now. All right, so... Oh, okay. I'm going to require sneak for that, which I can't do with heavy armor. So if, if there's a test and I'm wearing heavy armor, does that mean I can't sneak or can I do it you for the purposes? It. You can only do sneak in a combat. Um, if you're not wearing heavy armor, this okay. is um, uh, this wouldn't be affected. You could still use the sneak if you had the skill. And that's back in White Run. So okay, because I'm first player, I'll go first. Another Ooh, horse thief in Windhelm. Gain a horse. Take card S fifty one and discard this card. That's interesting. Oh, and look horse. who's in Windhelm. The sneaky Khajiit. <laughs> yeah, that would give me plus one movement. Um, and we, but there's a consequence for it so we have to take two threats okay i'll put one on my quest that i'm going to do because i know that will get absorbed that makes sense okay so i'm going to do this uh moon sugar rising in windhelm 
Ajit has wares if you have coin. Find me in my tent. Maybe we can do business together. You have to pay an investment fee, however. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Three dice. I need two triangles, and I can push with gold. I've got two gold. Mm, let's see. We need a little spare. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be a tricky one, isn't it? I'll risk one gold. Come on, show me what you've got then, Kajit. Oh, yes! yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I was going to fall uh, over. Gain two XP is a success and one component. I'm going to get a soul gem. I'm halfway to my next level up. Now I've got to make a choice of either I'll accept the one-off boon or become Zibam's partner. I think I'm going to go for one-off boon. That yes. sounds very good. Skooma. Interesting. Ooh. Turn two XP. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. To restore two stamina and two magicka. That's very clever. I like how you've done Skooma. And so that goes into my potions. And I need card eight. So we've got another quest that's coming down. So I need to go to a cave in the pale if I want to work on that. A cave in the pale is up here. There. Kind of on your way as well. Yeah, but I think... Um... You get so distracted by all the side quests. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. over to you. So I am going to be... In fact, I should probably put my uh, my threat token on the bandit heist since I'm doing it this turn. Yeah. Which is going to remove it. So I'll move over to Hafinger, where this cave is. Where I've heard about these bandits. Read this. In Hafinger, at first sight, the cave seems abandoned by men and nature. However, after a closer inspection, I find signs of recent use. I prepare my gear and march inside. So we're going to face two human enemies in here. Okay. So it'll be interesting to see if I can take on a solo dungeon. I cannot sneak in either, so I'm going to be taking the first hit of whoever this is. What have you got? A bandit berserker. Oh, the oh goodness. And he has ambushed as well. He's really hard to sneak. So if I was there, it would have been a tough one. But... Um... Uh, first of all, he ambushes you. That means he immediately does the skull attack on you without rolling, which is whatever is worse, one red or one yellow damage. Now, I think the got... yellow damage is going to be the worst because I don't have a resistance against it. So he does one wound on you. So I take one away. Uh, and now he attacks normally. So you need to roll the... Mm, okay, let's roll this. Dice and axe. Um... He, he misses. misses. Ah, okay. ah, some ambush. <laughs> yeah. So Sorry. you got a chance I, to. Take I him get out. to use my firebolt ability. I'll go for the burn. Yeah, it probably makes sense. Um, Safer. Yeah, and I, I've got four yeah. dice now because yeah. I have the destruction skill for one triangle on these four dice, and we get the one triangle. Good. So I did so, two damage to him. Health down by two. So now back to him. He's going back to, to back. Good. Um, drop your uh, magicka down with one. That's okay, one. sorry. And he got a, uh, I don't know, were we, were we watching the dice roll or he got a skull? A uh, skull. He does, again, one yellow to you. So you okay. lose the root. Another health. May have to okay. start looking at the health potion. <laughs> um, <laughs> then I'll do the same burn ability back with my four dice. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I hit him, and now he's dead. He's dead. So you get one XP, and... Three gold. Three. What have you got? Oh, it's a bear trap. Could have used that earlier. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so, first of all, you can attempt to lockpick it. Now, you don't have the lockpicking skill. No. So um, how would I... Do that. You just roll the basic three dice and you need two circles. Okay, okay. I'll try it out. Yeah. Oh, let me get one of these out of the way. Here we go. No! Uh, <laughs> I've uh, catastrophically uh, failed. Automatically does. Uh, I've literally walked over to it and put my head in it. 
Yeah, yeah. So that does three yellow damage to you. Let's have a look. Now, this is an interesting. Okay. Now, in theory, that would kill you because yes. you've only got three wounds left. But you have what's called a final wound here. So you can't ever take more than that. So it stops there. And you've got a chance. So you've got a healing potion. Yeah. Use that right now to regain a point of health. And again, you can't go back down below healing potion. So it give you a bit of a break. Okay, so I'll definitely use the healing potion. So I'll lose my two plant material down here. That gives you a wound back. So, um, so yeah. I'll go for just a, a standard burn attack. Yeah. Four dice. Here we go. See if I can destroy the bear trap. Yes. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Now it was a bit hairy down there. I almost died. Yeah, no. <laughs> Imagine just like someone finding a bear trap with a dead imperial in it just wondering what <laughs> happened in that cave it happens all the time <laughs> <laughs> so now you don't get any treasure because this isn't a normal dungeon but you completed your quest so let's have a look Fantastic. at your quest success i stand victorious over the corpses of my opponents i gain free experience and one advanced treasure place Ooh. one quest marker next to solitude outside the hideout i find a quiet place to review the evidence i gathered with horror, I realise the truth about Morva Karnai. Well, let's first of all do your treasure, because remember, you can take a wound to take can two. I? And so I, I do have one. I can take a wound without yeah, dying. Lucky that you did that healing, because uh, you can take your, you're down to your final wound, but you're still alive. So now you can draw two... Um, advanced treasures. Yeah, and pick the best one. Okay, so let's get number one, or <laughs> Ebony Sword, or... Yeah. An ebony bow. Ooh, this oh, this is interesting. Up. So the uh, someone asked me before about how does range combat work because it's not a tactical combat. So the way you can look at the bow has got um, aim times one. That means the first time you shoot an enemy, it's really easy. You only need one circle and it will do five red or five yellow damage. And then from then on, you're kind of in the thick of the fighting. So it needs two circles and it only does what three red. It's abstract. Uh, resembles you shooting from a distance and being able to t line up your shot. And I see. Um, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, I'm I'm cool. at an impasse because I'm like, well, I've kind of invested heavily into destruction magic, but this sword is really good. I get well, to do light and and red damage. You could, um, if you weren't using your shield, you could have the ebony sword in one hand. Ooh, um, maybe fire. I do that. And then you've got the option to do yellow or red damage. Um, and in your firebolt, you've got purple or red damage. So Okay, I'll take the ebony sword and I'll replace it with my shield. I've become like a, you know, like a, a spell slinger with a, with a sword as well. Yeah. Instead of the we tanky spell. character I'd started with. Oh yeah, and we need to read this card, 180. Yes. So so Morva Karnai is definitely working for the Thalmor. The organization has no right to operate in Skyrim. The High King needs to know about this urgently. Objective, gather all players in solitude, then flip over all the evidence cards you have. Ah. So it's the end of your turn. You can reset all your Okay. Stat. No longer almost dead. <laughs> and you're now first player. So I guess we're go all going to go to Solitude. I can get the cart there because I've got money. You're first player, so you need to draw the event. I'll go ahead and draw. And drag uh, it down here. Treasure Hunter, a world quest. Oh. Riches beyond belief are hidden in, an ancient, in ancient chambers. Can you get them without waking the undead menace in the pale? In a Is that a tomb? Oh, look at that. Clear three undead. Each of us would get an A treasure. That's insanely good. We definitely need to, to go and do that. Add two vampires. Oh, goodness. Oh, it's very tempting. Like, maybe the High King could wait a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. We might need to go maybe and do it's this. it's not that important that we tell him about Moiva Carne just yet. <laughs> But um, as you can see, it's very easy to get distracted. And yes. there's no real pressure to go and do that. We could just keep playing this and doing some dungeon crawls and doing the global quest. You could also steal the horse as well. I could. You know what? Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take a horse, which would let me move. So I put my little horse marker. Uh, that gives me plus one movement. But what does that do? 
Draw card S51 and discard this card. Okay, now you've done something bad. A bounty on me in East March. When entering <laughs> East March, you have to clear 347 an enemy or turn in 5 gold or turn in 10 anywhere in East March to get rid of this card. So basically... You've now got a bounty on your head in that hole. That's awesome. I didn't even know you guys had that yeah. mechanic. People Finish off see. our main quest, then we can see where we go from there. Since yeah, we've got yeah. loads of objectives on the board still. Now I've got a horse, so I'm just going to leave you behind. I can go one, two, three, four, five up to solitude. I'm going to have to pay for a car, I guess. <laughs> since I lost my horse. So one, Six, two, two, three, four, five. Or is it okay. two gold for a car? Uh, it's each hole that you have to cross. So you've got to cross. Oh, we see. Half and go. So that's two. And then we both have to turn over. Uh, don't let's flip this card until instructed by the card you drew, 183. So you need to. I've got to flip this over now. Flip all evidence cards. Gain two experience. If there are at least two tokens next to solitude, two quest tokens, 210 and read it out loud. Otherwise, 211 and read it out now. So I gained three XP. The reason I got three is because I did the. To finish the main quest first. Oh, Actually, that's I cool. So it rewards you based on who draws that first. Or card 210. Okay, you listen to the High King. The Thalmor shouldn't be operating in my kingdom, but you don't know, do you? The war's over. The Dominion and the Empire have signed an armistice. The blades have been disbanded. I've granted you an audience out of respect, but you must leave my palace immediately. Take this and may Talos watch over you. The High King gives you a sack of septims. Find a place to hide. A storm is coming your way. All right, we flip this card. Each player gains five gold. Chapter one is complete. We would now save all our characters for the next game. Fantastic. So this is chap so in the base game, this is just chapter one. And how many chapters does the base game have? Uh, so the, the base game has six chapters. The first Gosh. three are in this um, prequel. Um, you know, in the, in the 25 years before. So, you know, it's going to be the next one is the next bit of our story as we try to survive the chaos that's coming. And we've already been playing for how many hours so far? Uh, yeah, we started at uh, about 10, didn't we? So yeah, yeah. Well, yes. This game is supposed to be an hour, but as you can see, we got distracted. Got massively distracted by all the side quests. Yeah, so, um, and there's various other stories we didn't see. We didn't see all sorts of global quests like that. Um, so I can that. I can already see as well. My character like became a, a heavy armored like one-handed sword spell mage, but like I could have also gone like completely other different directions with the character based on what weapons and bows I was drawing. Yeah. So Chris, do you want to talk us through uh, how the Kickstarter works for people who are excited about what they've seen so far and what they can expect from the different? Yeah. Uh, we've designed this mad, crazy, big box game, and we've come to crowdfunding, and it's a website called GameFound, which is a bit like Kickstarter, but it's very focused on board games. And what we're trying to do is um, unlock and pay for a few really cool upgrades, so some extra miniatures, some really cool exclusive cards just for the, the base game in this uh, crowdfunding. If you order it here, it won't be in the retail version. And um, there's, you know, there's a chance to get everything with a really healthy discount before it goes to stores. The basic game is just £68, which is about $95. The actual retail one will be at least £100 or about $135 in store. And then we've got these Game Found exclusives, which are these legendary cards that we're announcing tomorrow. Uh, well, I'm saying tomorrow because we're recording this today. Probably but, be today. <laughs> uh, yeah, on so probably today. We're announcing I'll link the campaign below though so people can check it out as well. You can download the rule book and read the rules. Uh, we There's an um, intro tutorial book that teaches you the rules that you can use with the, the tabletop simulator just to uh, find out how to play. And then we've got what we call three reward tiers. So you've got the first one, which is basically the basic game. So that's 68 pounds. And that comes with these legendary unlocks, these like special exclusive cards. Now, if you want to really expand your uh, your experience. You can have the gameplay tier. This is £140. What does this give you? This gives you two more expansions. 
the Dawn Guard expansion, if you know your Skyrim, you know that's going to involve vampires. Yeah. Uh, that lets you have another whole campaign of another three chapters. So you can imagine dozens and dozens and dozens of hours of extra gameplay. A load more cards, loads more gear, loads more treasure, loads more money. Plus, we each start taking sides with Castle Volkahar or the Fort Dawnguard. So, we so you actually, could even work against each other in the same party. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a funny one. Like, we, we still have to work together against the big plot. But, yeah. and there's a plot to do with the Danger Princes. Uh, plus, um, we have this like political battle landscape starts to change as if more of a side with Castle Volkaha or with Fort Dawnguard and the things that you can do to influence what's happening in the game. And that also affects how the game plays out. And um, and it just gives you loads more options. And of course, you get vampirism, which is really cool. And you get oh, so different... you can become a vampire as well. Yes, totally. Yeah. You get a status card, and you basically get um, m more and more powerful as a vampire uh, uh, the longer uh, before you fed. And ah. uh, so that's really good. And uh, and you have a day and night effect as well. So oh, that's awesome! Really clever. And also, the vampires get to spend threats on really cool events that help their side. Oh and my also, god, that's so cl oh, I see all the mechanics coming together. It's very clever, this yeah, whole system. Yeah. Quite political as well. Yeah, and you can put vampires out onto the board. So there's this whole battle going on between the two factions, but you've got to work together. I mean, it's a bit like in the game. You know when um, you find the... the uh, I've forgotten her name, the girl who's the vampire. Serana. Serana. You find the vampire Serana in the tomb, and then you, you know, I, I went back to Fort Dawnguard, and they're like, "You've got a vampire with you." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> "It's fine, she's with me. We're on a quest together." And so it's a bit like that—that that you're all kind of working together on this big, mm. really big quest, but you are on different sides, right? Yeah. So, and then the From the Ashes expansion is awesome. This is a way of adding loads more flavor to the existing uh, nine chapters that you're now going to have. This adds a massive battle with a dragon. I mean, literally a huge dragon that takes over a whole hold. You're really going to have to tool up and work together. Think of this as the boss battle as a boss battle. And this dragon um, is going to um, move across the holds and get um, stronger in different ways. We also got a mini campaign called the Ghosts of the Blades. These are the ghosts of your fallen companions that are coming, they're chasing you around um, Skyrim and haunting you. You've also got oh, wow. several mini campaigns we're unlocking. We've already unlocked the mini campaign for bandits, skeletons, and draugr. And we've got the Dark Brotherhood mini campaign coming. That's like another um, 14, 15 cards each that add a whole new set of encounters that might happen. Maybe the Dark Brotherhood turn up in a town whilst you're there and try and take you down. You might find that draugr uh, are being added to dungeons uh, when you're facing the undead. So they're like all these different expansions uh, narratively yeah, to the storyline that already exists. That's yeah. really clever. And there's and we're adding more and more content to the From the Ashes box. And then if we go down, there's the deluxe version, which is uh, this adds a neoprene version of the game map uh, for people who like to spill their drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, you've got some gold septim coins to replace all the tokens. And awesome. then, uh, we've got the miniatures upgrade set. So we'll, if we look down to um, what we get in the boxes, we'll see what's in that. So this is just a sum you get in each box. Now have a look. So you've got all these cool miniatures. Um, you know, you've got the Nord, the Imperial, got an Awesome, you've got the Altma, and you've got the Dunma and Ajit. And then we go down. So look, have a look at the Dawn Guard there. You've got four more miniatures. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, we didn't actually discuss that, but you have different hero characters you can play yeah, at the start as well. Base game, yeah. You only saw four, and actually mm. there's only two that you saw. Um, the uh, Dawn Guard gives you another four to choose from, and this this is from the ashes. You can see all the extra cards and all these cool ghostly versions of the miniatures that will be chasing you around on the board. Come back to haunt you after chapter one. Yeah. I like how the storyline is very interweaved as well, based on what yeah. happens previously. And then the miniatures upgrade kit below. Um, this is um, this converts all those tokens for those wandering monsters into miniatures. So you've got Birth is Chosen, mm. you've got Dunna Cultus, you've got the Alfred Militia, you've got some Trolls, you've got some Daedra, Vampire, uh, you've got some Justicars, some roaming dragons and then another yeah. 
10 hero sculpts. So these are alternate sculpts in different equipment for uh, all the hero characters. You've got a bit of choice. That's and then insane. below that, we've got what's called the Adventurous Primer. Now, if you if you've, uh, like your miniature games, this is basically a, a bonus skirmish battle game with all the cards and the dice you need to play f uh, battles with all the miniatures in this box and the, and the rest of the And it's also compatible with our big skirmish miniatures game called A Call to Arms, and that is a really big uh, battle game that you can play solo, co-op, or vert. So this is all compatible. So that's a kind of bonus. So if you want to check out this whole campaign and also the stretch goals that they have in addition, which adds tons of extra stuff, you can find a link to the campaign in the description below. It's an affiliate link, so at no extra cost to yourself, I get a bit of money if you choose to buy the game or not. But if you are on the fence about it, I'd strongly suggest download Tabletop, get the free version of the game there and just try it out with some friends. It is very easy to pick up once someone teaches you or you run it through for the first time and honestly each time i play it the storyline changes massively and i'm just looking forward to like the whole thing coming out so i can play past chapter one and really commit to like a massive campaign with some friends and also guys if you have any questions leave them in the comments below because modifiates are going to be checking out the video and answering them there but i hope you guys enjoyed this sort of early introduction tutorial gameplay video we did it took me a long time to edit so I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to go to bed.